The world knows Dracula as the king of vampires. Before he became a vampire, few people knew that Dracula was even more brutal. He was nicknamed Puncture Male. Dracula was born in Romania. At age 10, he was taken by the Turks and turned into a killing machine. He would brutally stab his enemies to death at the stake after each city he conquered. Years later, Dracula returned to Romania. He married, had children and became king. Tired of killing, Dracula submits to Mamd, the king of Sudan of Turkey. The calm before the storm is shattered by a helmet. On this day, Dracula, with his escort, found the helmet of a Turkish scout just outside the border. Dracula knew Mem's character. The presence of a scout means that the invasion will soon begin. There was a mountain in the distance where the helmet had rolled down from above. Dracula could never have imagined that this would be the beginning of the curse. Dracula took his two guards to the top of the mountain. At the top of the mountain is a deep, bottomless cave. Dracula broke into it. In the dim light, they see the blood of the scouts being drained weirdly. The cave was filled with dead bones. As Dracula ponders, a mysterious species deep in the darkness has locked onto them. In an instant, he attacked. One was dragged away. The other had just turned around. Dracula swung his sword only to be flung away. He retreated to the mouth of the cave, thinking he was about to be killed. But the monster was afraid of the sun. Dracula escaped. Dracula's heart palpitated as he watched the creature retreat into the darkness. How could he have imagined? Two days later, he would willingly return here again. In the castle, the priest told Dracula an old legend. A thousand years ago, a man made a pact with a demon to gain eternal life. The demon gives the man extraordinary power and eternal life. In return, the man was turned into a vampire, trapped forever in a cave in the darkness of the night. But at this point Dracula was more concerned with Memd. As the lord of a small country, Vlad had to pay an annual protection fee to the Ottoman Empire, but this year's messenger asked him to provide a thousand boys to serve as Mem's Praetorian Guard. Having been enslaved as a hostage since he was a boy, Vlad was aware of the brutality of the Turks, so he approached Memd, hoping that he would spare the boys for the sake of the love they had grown up with. But Mem did not agree. Instead, he added Vlad's son as a hostage. Vlad had to compromise so that the people would not suffer. But just as he handed his son over to the greeting party, the soldiers on the other side, however, began to tease him. The provocation from the other side caused Vlad to explode with anger that he had been suppressing. He looked into the helpless eyes of his wife, Myrina. He finally made up his mind to let his son go. Although Vlad killed several of his opponents with ease, but he knew there was only one way to fight the Memd, to gain access to the terrible power of the Caves of Broken Hill. Now Vlad is out of options, he is undeterred by the bloodthirsty demon's head scratching, and the demon senses that the man before him is the one he has been waiting for. He dripped his blood into the container and told Vlad that if he drank it, he would gain dark powers, become the master of the night, and even heal a fatal wound, but at the cost of an unquenchable thirst for human blood. If he could resist drinking human blood for three days, he would gain his full power and regain his mortal body. Without hesitation, Vlad drank the demon's blood in one gulp. The demon was relieved, and Vlad fainted. When he woke up again, he had the full power of a vampire. He just wanted to get up but didn't expect the rock to be crushed, and the cut palm started to repair itself. What's more, not only did his hearing instantly increase a hundredfold, but he was also able to use ultrasound to locate any living creature thousands of miles away. He can even see the stars of the universe with his eyes. Suddenly the sound of cannon fire in the distance reached his ears. He began to run wildly toward the castle. In an instant he darted away in the form of countless bats. At this moment, Vlad is like a demon from hell. He took on the Turkish army single-handedly. He fought alone against thousands of soldiers from the Turkish vanguard. He had spent the night killing them all. Although Vlad felt the terror of the forces of evil, but to ensure the absolute safety of people, they had to evacuate to a monastery on top of a mountain. On the way, his wife wants to play poker with him, but this fuels Vlad's inner thirst for blood. Looking at the veins on Myrina's neck, he struggled to restrain his desire. And so Vlad endured the night. He controlled the hellish torture by sheer force of will. After repeated questioning from his wife, Vlad cut open the tent, and every inch of his body began to disintegrate rapidly. Her heart ached at the price her husband had paid to protect his people. To keep the secret, Myrina lied that Vlad was already out on a scouting trip. After a long night's drive, everyone soon arrived at the monastery. And yet there was an accident. It was daytime, but he was so afraid of the sun that he had to walk in the shadows. This was seen by the priest nearby. 
He suspected Vlad of being a vampire and came to him with a silver longsword. He cut right through the tent. The sun shone on Vlad's face, and his skin instantly began to disintegrate. The priest was terrified and ran out with a shout in a hurry. Everyone gathered around with torches. Despite Myrina's efforts to stop them, the soldiers set the hut alight. Vlad howled with a heartbreaking scream. Suddenly, a black cloud of smoke blotted out the sun. A furious Vlad slowly emerged from the flames. The pain in his heart was unmistakable as he looked at the people who had tried to kill him. Myrina rushed forward to calm Vlad. The people would understand his good intentions, but the most important thing at hand was how to deal with Memd. Since the last dispatch of the vanguard was decimated, word had spread that Vlad was a monster. The Memd had ordered everyone to be blindfolded to prevent fear among the soldiers, and he marched out with an army of 100,000 men. Meanwhile, Vlad was getting worried. According to the speed of the enemy's march, it was dawn when they reached the foot of the mountain. This was fatal for Vlad, who could only move in the dark. A bat suddenly swept through the air when he didn't know what to do. Vlad had an idea. He quickly reached the top of the tower and held out his hand. It was as if the bat had heard its master's call. In an instant, countless bats converged on the top of the tower. An army of bats was ready to take over the sky. For the sake of his people, Vlad had no regrets. He raised his hand, and the bats formed a palm. Vlad's army of bats beats mercilessly against the Turkish army like a wave. Before they could get their bearings, Vlad changed his gesture again. The army of bats rose into the air and struck Mem's army with an instant and devastating blow. At this point, Vlad understood the principle of capturing the thief before the king. He instantly transformed into a bat and joined the battlefield, knocking Memd off his horse. But as Vlad prepares to deliver the killing blow, he realizes that the man is an imposter. Vlad realized he had been played by the enemy. He quickly turns into a bat and rushes to the monastery. By now, Myrina's life was in danger. Although Vlad managed to kill the soldier in time, Myrina fell. Vlad leaps down. He explodes with all his strength to catch his wife. But the appearance of the sun at this time greatly weakened Vlad's power. Against all odds, he was unable to escape his fate. Before she died, Myrina told Vlad to suck her blood. For the sun had risen, and his power was about to fade. The only way he could save his son was to become a real vampire. Vlad finally bit down. This was the moment when Vlad became Dracula, the vampire. And all he had to do now was take revenge. He bites his wrist and feeds his blood to his dying people. At the same time, the general of the enemy camp noticed something unusual. Where the sun had risen, there were clouds and thunder and lightning. Yes, the man had returned. He had returned with a fury that was all his own. And Memd needed to realize the gravity of the situation. His army was about to face the might of the vampire army. However, Memd's soldiers were no match for the legions of vampires and were instantly wiped out. With the help of his kind, Dracula made his way straight to Memd's tent. But little did he know that the cunning Memd was prepared. He spreads the ground with silver coins. And he also holds a silver sword in his hand. Although these were all things that weakened the vampire's ability to fight. Dracula didn't flinch. He took up his sword to save his son and prepared for a man-to-man -man duel with the Memd. However things are not going well. Memd is not afraid of Dracula with the aid of silverware. In contrast, Dracula's power is greatly reduced. He was knocked to the ground by Memd in no time at all. Dracula was now in danger as he lay on the silver coin. The Memd didn't wait any longer. He picked up the stake and drove it into Dracula's heart. He struggled as hard as he could, but the stake was so powerful that it could easily disintegrate his armor. Looking at his son's helpless eyes, Dracula suddenly burst into a flood of power. In an instant, he turned into the bat and thrust the stake into Mem's chest. And so the unbeatable Mem died. Did you think that was the end of it? Of course not. Those who have become vampires are looking hungrily at Dracula's son. They don't have the same strong will as Dracula. The thirst for blood had driven them into a frenzy. Dracula took his club and killed the lead vampire. Although Dracula held him high in the air, the vampires walked slowly toward them. Suddenly there was a scream in the distance, and a priest with a cross appeared just in time. And Dracula makes a decision I never thought he would make. He handed his son to the priest and looked up to his wife, and said, He's safe now, Marina. With a wave of his hands, the clouds parted, the sun shone on the land, and all the vampires were destroyed in the sunlight. A king who loved his people, a devoted husband, a great father. At this moment, he had no regrets, but the ending was unbearable. So, just as I was about to send something to the writers, a devoted fan saved Dracula's life.
Time has changed and he is back again in a suit. And he also meets a woman who resembles Myrina. There's an unspoken understanding. There's a feeling of wonder that cannot be described. But the real game is just beginning. Remember to subscribe to my channel. And I'll see you next time.